How did we get them? There's somebody somewhere around online, so I did. Okay. Okay. Call a special meeting of the Brockton City Council for November 22nd, 2021. Would you please rise and salute the flag? I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, the to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America. Of America. To the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, 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 indivisible, with liberty. Mr. Clerk, item number one. Call of the meeting. Accepted and filed. Officer's return of notice. Accepted and filed. Number three, hearing. Ordered that the city council hereby determines the percentages of the local tax levy for fiscal year 2022 in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 56, to be borne by each class of real property as defined in Section 2A of Chapter 59 and personal property. Written and oral, excuse me, written and oral arguments will be taken at this time. All of the matters that could, could come before this body. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Is there anyone who has not signed in who wishes to speak this evening? The reason we have you sign in is so that your name and address will be in the record. Anyone who has not signed in? The public hearing uh, will consist of having each individual come up. You will have four minutes to make a presentation to the City Council. Uh, there won't be any questions and answers back and forth with us. This is an opportunity for us to hear your input on this particular issue. It's done every year. It's uh, the least palatable meeting that we hold because no one likes to set the tax rate. A uh, great deal of work has been done by both the Chief Financial Officer and the Board of Assessors, including uh, Mr. O'Donnell, who was here. So with that, um, Mr. Clerk, do you have the list? I do. First speaker is Robert Ford. All right, Mr. Ford, come on up. You may take your mask off when you're at the, at the podium. Right. And please feel free to adjust the microphone if you have to. So. Oh, how's that? That's good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Robert Ford. I live up in Bonnie Street in Brockton, up in the Ward 6 section. And uh, before I say anything, I just want, want to mention one of the biggest recurring problems of the city of Brockton is public apathy. You have a major election a few weeks ago and you got 25% of the electorate turning out. And, and they, they're the first ones to complain when they, when they get their tax bills. But uh, that being said, but uh, my wife and I, uh, we're both well into our 70s. Uh, our only income is Social Security. And to be honest with you, we can't absorb too many more of these major tax hikes. Uh, earlier this year, the January bill, I got a $400 increase over last year's taxes. And uh, what you have to do, you have to, you have to look at what you got coming in and make cuts wherever you can. But, you know, if this continues, uh, how much more can you cut back? You know, possibly, uh, I know some other cities and towns, you know, give seniors a break maybe on a fixed income. I'm not the only one. There's many others that I've talked to that they're having a hard, hard job, especially with this COVID thing that we, we're just getting over. And, you know, there's, and you, you can't go to the Social Security Administration and ask for a pay raise. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. But, uh, you know, one, one thing unique about Brockton is it's the only city that has two mayors, one that's elected and another guy that's calling the shots. Uh, and, you know, as far as what, what I see going on in the city, you know, you as far as your tax all it's hard to work for you. You know, you start by traffic light and you see a high-end SUV with municipal plates pull alongside of you. You know, and, you know, are these your tax all it's hard to work for you? And, and then there's another thing too, there's substantial tax breaks if you're well connected in the city. I've, I've got documentation a few years ago that uh, a handful of people that were insiders here in the city, got a total of $317,000 on, on, on their tax collectively. And go, you know, God help you if you go up 
and, and ask you go to the assessor's office and ask for a few bucks off. You know, <laughs> they show you the the exit door, and uh, you know, and then union contracts. This most recent one, the fire department. It's it, you know, it's more than just a coincidence that they'll they'll leave it hanging until just a few weeks before the election, and all of a sudden now now we've got the contract signed. And you know it's obvious what's going on there, and uh, and you know they leave it hanging for a year and a half, two years without signing, and now now that now they're faced with uh, giving these folks retroactive pay, and they don't put money in an escrow account. They have to go before the council to appropriate 150,000, 200,000 to you know, to cover the retroactive pay. Uh, my, one of my recommendations is that maybe we have an outside auditor come in and open the city's books from top to bottom and uh, you know, see how much money we actually have and maybe make re recommendations on how to, how, how to run the organization a little bit more efficiently. And, uh, you know, like, like I say, we've 2020 and 2021 uh, both, both years, yeah, the city, you know, as far as re residents are concerned, we, we saw major tax hikes. Like I say, I went up over 20% over, over last year's bill. And, uh, you know, and I, I'm at the point where, you know, I've lived most of my life here in the city, but if it continues, I'm going to have to look, look, look for another, another place to live. You know, I, 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 I can only pay so much money. <laughs> And that's, that's about all I have to say. Uh, thank you, and thank you for sticking to the time limit, Mr. Ford. Thank you. Mr. Second speaker is Mark J. Osborne. Good evening, my name is Mark Osborne. I live at 14 Harwich Road in Brockton in Ward 3. And I'm going to ask to yield my time to my friend Jamal Brathwaite because he's much more conversant with this issue than I am, if, uh, with permission. I, I, we're not going to swap off time, so if you... If you uh, he gets his time also, if you want. All right, good. He's then going to have his time, too, but otherwise... I'll try to get him to speak could... uh, double fast then. Yeah. Uh, all I want to say is that, in the, particularly in the last five years, I've knocked on hundreds, if not thousands, of doors in Brockton uh, advocating for various um, uh, groups and certainly uh, for various campaigns. And personally, I'm very fortunate. I'm well employed. Uh, I'm well remunerated. Uh, and I'm very pleased to live in Brockton, and I'm going to continue to live in Brockton. But I see that many people are overburdened by the tax levy that they have. And uh, as my friend Bob says here, so many of them are on a fixed income. They don't have the opportunity, like I do, to continue working and to make more money. So I ask that you consider the uh, shift in the rate to be as beneficial as possible to the actual individual homeowners in Brockton. And uh, also, I hate to shift some of the burden over to commercial and industrial properties. Uh, I feel they're better off, uh, better suited to being able to plug that gap and to get us to the $160 million I think we need to raise. Uh, than the individual homeowners collectively. And that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Clark. Michelle Henson. Please, Hello. Please, adjust, yeah, please adjust that as you need. Uh, fine. Hello, my name is Michelle Henson. I live at 16 Ardsley Street. Ward 6. Um, I have more of a comment than a question because I'm looking over the information given to you all and graciously provided to residents this evening, but it doesn't help me understand what you're doing. When I look at this residential exemption of up to 35%, it doesn't really explain who that might apply to. Do we have enough places like apartment buildings that can sustain such a shift? Would that, would that shift really benefit enough residents? 
Um, like Mr. Ford said, there are a lot of us seniors, some of us disabled, some of us trying to stay in our homes, age in place here in Brockton, here in this city that we love. And I want to make sure that you can make it easy for us. But I want to also ask that if the things that you're considering are actually something that are in fact helpful, are they things that you could implement that would benefit the residents of Brockton? And I would appreciate that going forward if you could make some of these things clearer to those of us who don't have everyone to ask on a regular basis to clarify these things for us. Make this stuff available to us. Make it clear to residents. You want us to participate? Give us the information. Give us what we need because we're happy. A lot of us are more than happy to come up here and talk to you and say what we have to say, but it would be nice to be able to come up here with clear information. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Jean Holmes Carillas. Good evening, all. Thanks. 65 Belcher Ave. I'm asking you to shift the tax rate to the resident's favor by the full 175%. So that would be a 1.75% benefit to the residents um, and something that can be borne by the, uh, the commercial uh, individuals. My uh, reading of prior shifts have indicated that in fact, although there was a shift wherein the commercial had a higher rate, the bottom line was their bottom line tax was less uh, and actually decreased, whereas the residents, even though you did the shift, the residents still paid an increase. So the 175% shift doesn't really make things fair, but I understand that the law is, it limits it to 175%, ask that you do that. Likewise, in regards to the residential exemption, there's no information as to who that is going to apply to and how it's going to be done. Now, I applaud you for doing it. My niece lives in Boston. She gets a residential exemption every year. She gets $3,153 taken off of her taxes after the taxes are set. But we don't know what it is that you all are trying to do here. That you, you put forth information, but you don't explain it in sufficient detail for people to even come before you and make reasonable comment. So I would ask that you make that information available, reconvene, and have another hearing wherein people can actually discuss intelligently what the residential exemption is going to be, who it's going to apply to, how it's going to be applied, and the same way with the small business exemption. They're important to do, certainly. They do it in many other communities. But we need to know how you're going to do it and how it is that you're going to provide those exemptions and decreases from our taxes as residents and still be able to make the bills. So I would respectfully ask that that information be provided, another hearing be convened with sufficient information so that public comment can be reasonably and intelligently made. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the chair has a, a point of information uh, for either Mr. Claxon or for Mr. O'Donnell. Uh, this is the second reference I've heard to residential exemption. I, I am not aware that that is before us. Is that something that either of you... There's one more speaker if you want to... Uh, well, I, but it may impact on what that next speaker is going to say, Mr. Clerk. So are, are you aware of anything to, with residential exemption? I know there are 14 communities that have it in this state, but is that is that part of this packet that you gave to us? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. Uh, the, the answer is no, it is not before you tonight. There is a residential exemption that approximately the, a dozen or so, 14 communities in the Commonwealth have. <clears throat> but it's not something that's before the council tonight. So that that was not just for clarification. That was not in the packet that we received or anything that was recommended by the assessors because it, it appears there is some misinformation out there and I hate misinformation. It's an option that every community has to consider. Tonight's hearings for the shift in the rate, uh, small commercial exemption and the uh, residential exemption. It, it, it is an option, and you, as it is fact, an option. You and I spoke about it. There's yes. 14 communities that have yeah, it. Yeah, there's 14 or 16, um, Boston, uh, Waltham, 
Cambridge, Somerville, Everett. Um, but what would happen, I can explain it somewhat. I've looked into it. So it's the whole residential. Like uh, Council Rodriguez asked me a couple years ago about this. He wanted to do it for uh, twos and threes when they had that sharp increase. But it, it takes the whole residential class. So that's $8.4 billion of our tax levy. And all they're going to do, all they'll do is shift it to um, non-owner-occupied, uh, high-end properties that are occupied. And, uh, they, you know, we, they still keep that 8.4. It's not like shifting over the commercial. It's, it's still going to be born in that um, class. So it takes quite a bit of analysis to figure out if it's a break-even for the city. It might not be, as someone mentioned before. It might not be beneficial. It would, have, it would take two to three months just to have people qualify. They got to bring in their um, federal tax returns, state tax returns, and two other forms of uh, residing at that property. So evidence of residing. All right, thank you, councilors. I just wanted to make sure that we weren't doing something that we didn't provide information about. So uh, with that said, uh, Mr. Clerk, would you call the next speaker? Uh, yes, see, uh, actually I'd reached out this afternoon, Mr. Jamal Braithwaite. Hello, everyone. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Jamal Brathwaite, 18 Park View Lane. So today I'm here to advocate for three um, for, for three categories of uh, relief for property owners here in the city of Brockton. Uh, first is the regarding the residential factor. I'm advocating that there be a full 175% shift in that factor rate to provide relief for residential property owners, especially given the fact that the uh, tax assessment on average increased by over 8% this year. So that will be a contributing factor to the increase in tax liability. So I, th I, I would uh, favor that one, but also... Um, in the packet that was provided to the public, it did speak to the concept of the residential exemption. So I just also want to advocate that I think the city council should consider uh, the concept of a residential exemption program that's eligible for property owners who are, one, disabled and depend on Social Security disability income. Uh, two, the elderly who are age 65 or older and who are dependent on fixed income. And thirdly, are people who live below the federally federal poverty income, um, income level, uh, they should also be considered. And fourthly, we should also consider uh, property owners to invest in their properties that add value to the overall tax assessment uh, system we have here in Brockton. So uh, a program like that doesn't exist, but I think if it does that, that would uh, motivate property owners to invest more in their properties, which is what we want. So overall, those are my recommendations, and I hope that you take that in consideration. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That's it for the people who signed up. That's it. Is there anyone else who wish? Uh, yes, sir. You? I came in after you. So oh, you can cool. step forward. Yeah, just come up and uh, just give us your name and address. And Thank you. Uh, my name is Jed Horesco. I live uh, in the Soco Lofts at 147 Center Street. Uh, H R E S K O. Um, so, uh, yes, I, I totally endorse the 175% uh, shift also as uh, for the, one of the reasons that Jamal had mentioned, which is the uh, increase in valuation. Uh, in my case, my property that I'm in now, I bought in 2019. Uh, in 2018, the taxable value was 135. I'm going to round the numbers. Uh, 2019 was 164. In 2020 was 189. Uh, in 2021 was 228. We're almost 229, and now it's almost $246,000. Now, uh, is that uh, in line with what I paid for it? Sure, I paid 255,000. Although I wonder why uh, the assessments only recently caught up. Uh, but for me, effectively, what that means is my tax bill has gone up by 35% since I moved in. So, so when I moved in two years ago, almost two years to this day, it was my tax bill was about 2,550. And now, uh, based on what I'm reading on my property card, and this is if you adopt the 175%, my tax bill would be 3434, which would also be an increase over last year's tax bill. 
Now, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not against taxes. I'm progressive. I'm, I, I think taxes are, go are good if they're invested properly and wisely. Uh, and I would love to see more investment uh, in Brockton. Uh, I worked on one of the district campaigns, and one of the anecdotes we heard is that district councilors only get six or seven streets to fix up, to recommend for repair uh, in the city. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what's out there. And, and, and I, not that taxes are only about the streets, but what I've seen with the streets so far doesn't inspire confidence. Whether the way the Forest Avenue was done, the little bit that was done uh, right when school started, uh, was, does not inspire confidence. And I think that unless we have transparency and we have more information given to the public, unless we uh, have a fill the city auditor's position, uh, it's hard for taxpayers to feel uh, the best about investing. Again, I repeat, I'd be happy to invest more uh, in Brockton, but we'd like to know where our money's going. So, um, and lastly on that point, I would uh, highly recommend that the uh, council and the, well, the administration, the council, uh, consider uh, Jamal Brathwaite to be the city auditor. I think he'd be a fantastic auditor for this city. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. Anyone else? I don't have anybody else. Is there any, anyone else who would like to speak? Anyone else who would like to speak? Last call. Anyone else? If not, I declare the hearing closed. Councilors, the issue now comes on setting the factor for FY 2022. If councilors have any questions of Mr. O'Donnell or Mr. Claxon, uh, please. Uh, Councilor Thompson, then Councilor Cardozo. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, John, uh, Mr. O'Donnell, I was wondering if I, just a couple questions. Uh, some of the uh, um, residents uh, commented regarding some help for our seniors. Um, can you explain what's available for our seniors under uh, our tax laws right now, yeah. including um, the senior exemptions? Sure. Just... We, have, we have two senior exemptions, a 17D, which is, um, it is only based on someone's asset, doesn't take any income in effect. So it's, it's the lower amount that's roughly just under $200. And then we have a 41C, which is income and asset based. Um, all the information is online. Uh, that's $750 plus with that, they would get their uh, trash. So they get another $280 deducted there. And uh, it's all online. They can call my office, uh, speak to either Jackie or Ellie, and they'd be more than helpful to help me with it. Also, uh, for, and I appreciate that. Um, also, I understand, is, is there any um, tax exemption uh, for our, our disabled residents as well? No, they'd fall under the uh, 41C. Blind, they blind get a $500 exemption, but that's the only disabled. But they'd fall under the 41C. They'd have to meet the um, income and asset guidelines. Understood. Um, also, I know you briefly spoke about um, the residential exemption. I know we've talked about that in the past. Um, from my understanding, uh, a lot of the other uh, uh, towns or cities in the Commonwealth that um, implement the residential exemption is because they have a, a high percentage of rental properties. Uh, they're not uh, owner-occupied properties. These are investment properties or rental properties. Um, and so uh, what the residential exemption does is kind of shift the burden uh, over to investment properties or um, you know, uh, uh, rental properties. And um, speaking about this issue in the past, uh, Brockton really doesn't have a high percentage of uh, rental properties here in our, our, our city. So could you speak a little bit to that issue? Sure, I mean, we have most of our uh, twos and threes. So we have uh, 1,500 two-family dwellings and 2,000 three-family, I believe it is. And they'd mostly be owner-occupied. So they would qualify, but they're the high-end sales right now, so they're gonna, they would qualify for an exemption, but their assessment would increase. So like I was saying before, how we, the, the burden ha stays the same. In the, and we only have 405 roughly apartment complexes. Uh, that's from four units out. So we don't have a lot, of, we're not like Quincy or Everett who has a lot of non-owner occupied buildings. They have a lot of non-owner occupied condos but most of our condos are owned or occupied. And so um, if our two family, three families 
are uh, mostly owner occupied, they would. Uh, they would not be they would not be counted in the shift. They would get be counted in a shift for the two apartments or one apartment that oh, they're they not. They get the whole exemption, but mm. we got to we'd have to do an analysis to see what there's a break even point that the Department of Revenue will provides to us. We'll show you, but it's all going to shift onto the the lower um, price houses. will get the most benefit, and then, then there'll be a point where everything over say five hundred thousand, it's they won't receive the benefit as the lower price homes. So it'd be a decreasing benefit after you get over a certain sure, uh, valuation exactly. of your home. Yes, and and it seems like most of our homes. What's the medium value of our of a home in Brockton right now? Well, assessed value. Uh, this year, it's uh, the median assessed sale price is to date is four twenty six. Okay, so right on that borderline. Yeah. Anyways, okay, understood. Uh, no additional questions, Mr. President. All right, Councilor Cardoza. Good evening, Mr. O'Donnell. Good evening. So earlier on, when I started on the council, I sat down with you, Mr. Jamal Brathwaite, and we put together some guidelines, what we felt would be helpful for residents in the city for you to uh, consider. And some of that was what I call language equity or information equity, where we provide information in different languages to residents. So it's been two years since we had that conversation. Have you made any progress? Was there any information sent out? We hear residents talking about information and they are English speaking residents who uh, the information was not clear to them. Can you imagine we're in a city where there's majority non-English speaking people? Have you provided any information in different Our languages? abatement application, the process, it's already been updated for this year, is in three, four languages. The letters that went out for today were in different languages? No. That don't you think that's something we should have done? We want to increase civic During engagement future, and participation, yes. and we want people to come in and participate, but I honestly feel like we don't want people to participate because everyone says that we have dismal turnout for these meetings. Yeah, duh. Who, who, no one's getting a notice at home in different languages. We don't There's send nothing notices. on BCA. There's nothing in the paper. We don't have, you know, we have K Verdian and Haitian radio stations that, you could reach out to with information. No one does that. So how do we expect people to participate in this city? We post it in the enterprise. It's posted in City Hall. It's on online. We follow the guidance of the Department of Revenue. Yeah, we have to do better. We have to do better because taxes is a big thing. I've walked many people into City Hall to help them uh, to apply for these abatements. They had no clue existed. So we want to be able to help people. We say we want to help people, but we're not providing information to, to folks. That information to let them is know in that multiple they, languages. Listen, no one's reading the enterprise, okay? It, we have to do better. You know, we should mail out in different languages so people are aware. We don't mail that information out. That's not something that's so done. These it's people received a letter at home. Did they not? No. 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 You didn't no. receive a letter? No. no one gets a letter at home? No. no. Don't you think that's something you should do? It's never done before. I'm... So they have to come to City Hall to, to, to find out that there was a meeting tonight about the attack. Oh, no, it was posted. It was posted online. If they don't read it on the Enterprise. Well, we're not required to do that. I just think it's sad. It's a sad state of affairs in Brockton. You heard people mention that they don't even understand what's going on with the postings and, you know, and what's posted in the Enterprise in English. And there are many people in this city that don't speak English. So if we want them to participate, we oh. should at least try. And those are some, that was some of the recommendations that we made to you earlier on two years ago when I started. So I hope that at some point that that's something that you would consider doing. Yeah, well, the, the booklets will be in three languages. It's very sad. The other thing that the only comment that I have is um, in reference to us spending our money more wisely I think that Mr. Ford made an excellent point um, in Jed um, about an overhaul of our finances and making sure that we, the residents know exactly where these monies are being spent. You know, I haven't seen an auditor, I've been here for two years. Mel was here in the beginning and I would be able to reach out to her um, for questions and then since then, nothing. So there's no checks and balances and nobody knows what's going on on this council in my opinion. But. It's sad. It's sad for the residents. I appreciate all of you for showing up tonight. Thank you so much. And I hope that we can get more engagement, more folks to come out in the future. Thank you, Mr. Chair.
Welcome. Councilor, the, the chair would say that nothing prevents a city councilor from holding an open meeting and presenting information in a bilingual way either. Uh, anyone else? Uh, councilor Mendez. Yes, um, just want to ask you a question. What is the deadline next year for people to file for their tax abatement? Uh, February 1st. February 1st. The it's 30 days after the third quarter bill is issued. That is the complaint that I get from the resident. By the time they get their bills, in order for that timeline for them to file it, then it's already too late for that year. So when did they get notice that their tax bill is going to be uh, either increasing or decreasing? Anyway, first. Yeah, so they only have 30 they days. Can know, they can know now. Once the rate's set, all assessments are online. They've been online since uh, October 28th. All new assessments have been out there. So right now, once we vote on this tonight, it will be updated online. So if people are knowledgeable enough to go online and find out, then it will be on their card, their, on their yes. property tax card. Exactly. Because I, the normal population, people, they just wait for the bills to come home. By that time, once they receive it, then it's time for them to file the tax abatement before they realize it's already passed the deadline and then they miss it. So we have to do a better job just to let them know. So it will be updated next week it's already updated oh it's already updated tax rate will be updated once it's finalized by the state so all the assessments are updated so even though they haven't received any changes on their bills it's all there for them to find out yes okay thank you for that information anyone over here i keep favoring the left anyone over you, here we've noticed that <laughs> yeah you do it's oh, all right we all anyone set else? i'll make just just for the public we are at 175 now am i correct yes all right uh, and again, this is more for the public, but one of the handouts indicates that the FY21 average single family value was 310596. I do understand that's gone up by about 10%. Yes. And that if the 175 factor were retained, the average single family house would see a $267 increase in yes. taxes is that correct yes it is and that's the handout that we yeah, have and better look at the median than the average it's a little bit lower right. councilors any uh councilor monahan i make a motion that we use the 175 factor second second all right there's been a motion made and properly seconded to retain the 175 factor any further discussion if not would the clerk please call the roll Azak? Yes. Cardozo? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. It's 10 in the affirmative. All right, we have adopted a factor of 175. Uh, Mr. Clarkson, before we leave, I have a question for you, if you don't mind. I was going to bring this up before the election, but I, it would have looked like a, a gimmick. ARPA funds can be used to mitigate against the economic uh, stress that is inflicted upon uh, taxpayers. Am I correct? Yes, there is a provision of <clears throat> ARPA called revenue replacement, and there's a standard calculation that the federal government requires us to do. We've conducted that calculation, so we have an amount that can be used throughout the periods over the next couple of years, if, if necessary. All right, you, you gave me a figure of 23,622 people the other day that get water and sewer bills. Uh, I would respectfully ask you to provide the council with an opinion as to whether we could take some ARPA funds and give each residential homeowner a $200 credit on their water and sewer bill the money coming from APA, and that would mitigate against the tax increases that are going to be felt. Uh, again, I didn't want to do this before the election because then you get all sorts of criticism, but I think it's a valid use of funds. I think if other people are going to be coming in to see the mayor saying they want funds for various issues, then the residents ought to at least have a, a shot at it. So if you would research that and then distribute the information 
not only what it would cost, but also uh, uh, whether it's legal, I would appreciate that. Happy to do that, certainly. Does anyone else have anything uh, they want to ask, uh, Mr. I have a question. Uh, Councillor Cardozo. <laughs> I'm sorry, Councillor uh, Rodriguez. Well, did you just say you get, you're going to give them a $200 credit on their water bill? Water and sewer bill. Well, I, I'd prefer to see it go to the taxpayers, to be honest with you, because uh, does, we have some folks who are hooked up to our sewer and water system who are not necessarily from Brockton. So I would prefer to give whatever tax breaks we're going to give to residents of this city. So I would, I would basically advocate for a tax break in the taxes, not necessarily the water, if we're going to give somebody a break. Because there's some folks that, again, who are um, property owners who do not reside in Brockton. Uh, they're going to get a, a break on their on their water and sewer bills, and while while we have, and we were just talking about seniors having a real tough time making ends meet here in the city, who put up with all the BS that comes along with uh, our community, that deserves to get all the benefits, not necessarily the ones that are actually from the outside. So that's what I would advocate. Uh, Councilor, I agree with you. I think it should be owner occupied residential people. But I think we have to find out, A, how much it will cost, and B, it, it's legal. And then after January, an order can be filed, work with the mayor, and work it out. Because there's only six months now to make up that arrearage. There are only two more tax payments. That's, that's the tough part about setting the tax rate now. You can't amortize it over four payments. So uh, anyone else? I, I do, Mr. President. Uh, I, oh, I couldn't see you. Councilor Azak. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. O'Donnell, um, you gave us a breakdown on what 1.75 means for residential. Can you tell us what that means for the commercial? Um... Uh, on commercial, on the median bill, it will go down $3.34. And on, uh, that's for commercial and industrial will go down $45.74. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, all right, we're going to take a recess because we have to calculate now that the factor has been set. So this, oh, well, we don't have to take a recess because we have a sharp legislative council here. So. <laughs> Yeah, please do. <clears throat> okay, so here's what the, um, the order will read. Um, order that the City Council hereby determines the percentages of the local tax levy in accordance with the provisions of MGL Chapter 40, Section 56 to be borne by each class of real property as defined by Section 2A of Chapter 59 in personal property. Residential, 73.7364. Commercial, 17.4426. Industrial, 3.3570. Personal property, 5.4640. The factor for such classification shall be 1.75. Somebody needs to make a motion to... Motion to approve it. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Right. Motion to approve, properly seconded. Any further discussion? If not, with the clerk, please call the roll. Azak? Yes. Cadozo? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Castro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. Motion to re Is there a motion to reconsider in the hope that it does not prevail? So moved. Second. There's a motion made and properly seconded for reconsideration in the hope that it does not prevail. If you're in favor, raise your hand. If you're opposed, Raise your hand. Reconsideration fails. There being no further business before this public hearing, we are adjourned.